thank you all for joining us today. It's going to be a terribly, terribly exciting uh, and uh, knowledge-filled hour. So, uh, yep, our participant numbers are still ticking up. So just going to give it another 10 seconds. And then we will get going. Um, right. Okay, I'm going to start us. So, look, welcome all. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, so, this is a terribly, terribly exciting year. Uh, the EO Knowledge Program, which is uh, the largest piece of research that uh, has ever been done into EO business performance in the UK, is going to hit the ground running this year. And uh, we are terrifically excited and we are hugely, hugely grateful that um, pretty much every attendee on this call has already put their hand in the air and said, look, we really want to do this and we want to help the sector make this happen. So, so the big message from us is thank you. But what we want to do today is just explain a little of what we're going to, uh, of what you can expect and what we're asking for from you. So um, uh, I've, I've got Fran from EOA. Uh, and um, and I've, I've got Adriana and I've got Al from our research partners, um, but I'm going to hand over to Fran in the first instance. She's going to just set out our agenda and what we hope to accomplish with the day uh, and some of the headlines on what we think this research program can achieve. So Fran, over to you. Brilliant. Thank you, Campbell. All right. If we can move on to the next slide, please, Nathan. Thank you. Uh, so today we are going to go through an outline of the benefits of the program, so why we're doing this, just very briefly. Uh, we will provide an overview of the knowledge program overall, talk through each of the three main work streams. So those are the EO performance project, the good EO project, and the integrated impact project. So explaining what those involve. And then we'll have some time at the end to do a Q&A with our research partners at CVI Economics. So if we can move on to the next slide. <coughs> I just want to quickly thank all of our sponsors uh, who have made uh, the knowledge program possible through their investment and are helping us, you know, do this really important piece of work over the next few months. So they're all up on the slide in front of you. Just want to acknowledge their uh, support for this. Um, if we could move on, Nathan. I'm going to say a few words about why the EO wanted to work on this project and why we've partnered with Ownership at Work. So, as you'll likely be aware, to date, the sector has lacked uh, significant hard data to back up what we anecdotally say about the impact of EO often. It's really important that we have that so that we can provide a solid basis for our conversations where we advocate for the EO sector. Can I just ask that um, anyone with their mics on, would you mind muting yourself if you've just joined? Brilliant, thank you. Thanks everyone, there's a little bit of background noise. All right, so this programme is going to help us build high quality evidence that we don't already have. Um, we need that solid facts and the data on the impact of EO so that we can conclusively say what the impacts are. I'm not going to jump to conclusions on what those impacts are because our colleagues at CBI Economics will tell me off. Um, but uh, compared to the wider economy, we don't have that evidence. We get asked about that by policymakers and we get asked about it by journalists all the time. We need that uh, credibility um, through conclusive data. We also want to gather EO specific good practice data. We've got a lot of anecdotal information, a lot of case studies from good practice, but this program will really help us solidify what good practice is and what makes a successful EO business. Um, we'll understand better uh, how EO drives measurable impacts, what the impact actually is and how we can capture that. And we'll use all of the above, as I mentioned, to promote um, uh, the model amongst all four nations, amongst um, Westminster, Whitehall, et cetera, amongst journalists. We'll raise awareness of EO as a successful model and we'll raise support for it, um, both for existing businesses and for the landscape to promote potential new EO businesses. And we're going on that note to aim to help protect the sector's existing tax reliefs, 
everything that helps existing businesses uh, in the EO sector and new and upcoming ones. As you'll likely be aware, it's there's exponential growth in the EO sector and we want to see that continue. So that's it from me, I'll hand back to Campbell now. Thanks Fran. Uh... As you can all hear, an absolutely brilliant set of benefits in terms of what we're trying to achieve. Really, really important. So just look, thank you again, everybody, for engaging with this. Um, uh, just in case that people don't know uh, who I am, uh, my name is Campbell McDonald. I'm the Chief Executive of Ownership at Work. So Ownership at Work is an independent think tank for the sector. Uh, we've been up and running for a few years now. We very, very cleverly launched just before pandemic. Uh, so uh, we've been fighting to, to get ourselves up and running and established over the last few years. And this is the biggest project that we have underway. And we really think that this is going to be a game changer uh, for the sector. Um, we're doing this in partnership with EOA. Uh, we are doing this in partnership with CBI Economics and DGS Research, which is absolutely uh, brilliant. Uh, those guys are going to talk to you a bit when we get to the Q&A. In the meantime, I am going to kind of lift the bonnet on how we're proposing to do this research. Um, uh, and and just, just to kind of flag up front, the big ask for us is that you give us a bit of your data and a bit of your time. And I'm going to have a third ask, which is we have a fantastic number of businesses from the sector who've already put their hands up. But the aim to make this research as absolutely credible as possible is to get at least 10% of the sector in the UK to be part of the research. So that is uh, 150 employee-owned businesses as, as a baseline. Um, uh, Gay, yeah, certainly we can. We will intend to share these slides after the session. Some of them are going to have uh, some quite small writing and a bit of detail on them. So, and I'm not going to read them out. So. Uh, so yeah, so these will, these will all come out to everybody and don't feel you have to take notes. Um, but my final ask, therefore, is if you know other employee-owned businesses, if there are organizations that you're talking to uh, who aren't involved, please point them our way. Please encourage them to, to be involved. Um, so uh, I'm going to move us on. Nathan, if you could ping us on a slide. So the way we've gone about this is uh, we put together a program that has three distinct strands in it. So the first of those, we're calling the EO Performance Project, and that is about creating this baseline that doesn't exist today. So you heard Fran mention the fact that we, we are spoiled as a sector with very rich, qualitative, anecdotal data about excellent EO businesses. But what we don't have is a treasury quality, quantitative and qualitative baseline that will really slam dunk the difference that employee owned businesses make when compared with non employee owned businesses. So that's absent and we really need it. We need it to open the door with policymakers, not just at a national level, but regionally, locally, so that we can talk not just about the productivity gains we believe that employee-owned businesses deliver, but also the really important wider social impacts and potentially environmental impacts. So that, that first strand is going to aim to pull that out, and I'll do a bit more detail on, on how. Now, in, in addition to just sort of saying, right, well, look, this is what performance looks like, we really want to understand why, and we want to be able to explain what we think is going on inside EO businesses, which is driving some of those performance outcomes. So the second strand is qualitative. It's about interviewing management teams and employee-owned businesses and really extracting from them what does good practice look like? What are they routinely doing that are driving those kind of results? And then there's a third element. The third element recognizes that point I made about we, we have to do more than just show the economic impact of these businesses. We've got to try to show that wider social and potentially environmental piece. And what we're conscious of is that actually not a lot of employee-owned businesses uh, necessarily measure certainly the social and environmental impact that is attributable to the ownership model. 
And that's a really important distinction at attribution point. So what we want to try to do is create a tool that we can share as a kind of free public good with the sector to help people start to measure and track that. And the aim of this whole project is, yes, we draw a baseline, a moment in time, but we're going to compound the value of that data by doing some of these things year on year moving forward. So we really build up a rich, rich footprint that, uh, that we can keep sharing with external audiences. So that's the overview. Uh, if you can move us on, Nathan. Right, so strand one, EO performance project. Uh, so I've talked a bit about some of the detail. The key point here is there's really two ways to show the differential impact, the difference that employee ownership makes. Either you can compare employee-owned businesses with non-employee-owned businesses, or you compare businesses before and after you introduce EO. Well, we're doing the first of those here. So we uh, have designed a survey, that survey is going to come out to uh, all of you. It's also going to get shared with a group of non-employee-owned businesses who will be selected uh, to roughly you know, be peer. It'll be apples for apples. There'll be you know, comparable businesses, and we're going to compare the uh, the results uh, to see what we can you know, show by way of differential impact. And our primary audience here are policymakers and treasury and so on. And one of the reasons we are working with CBI Economics is that they have a really crystal clear idea of the way that treasury wants to see this kind of evidence for certain business models. Uh, and Adriana and Joe can talk a bit more about that, hopefully, during the, during the Q&A. Um, so this is how we're going to do it. If we move on. Um, so there's a lot going on here. You'll get these slides, so you'll have a chance to pick this apart. But uh, we are asking a lot from quite a small survey. So the survey is designed not to take you longer than 15 to 20 minutes, uh, but uh, just, just to give you an idea of the kind of information that we're going to pull out through that. So that first column, that first set of three blocks, what we're doing there is we're getting some identifier data, essentially, some core business characteristics, how big you are, where you are, what sector you're in. We want to pin down some basics around purpose and, and mission statements and so on. And we want to get the basics around your particular governance model and how decisions are made in employee voice. So that's kind of point one. Point two is to get some of those financials, get some of those commercial measures and this is one of the key elements, as you would expect, that Treasury is going to want to see what's the relative productivity impact of EO businesses versus other businesses within particular regions, within particular sectors. And are you more responsive? Are you more resilient as businesses? So that's that second strand. And then the third element is that piece about that richer, deeper impact. And uh, we uh, are trying to get this across three levels. So our hypothesis that we'll test, if you like, is that there is an impact, a positive impact on individuals. So some of that's around sharing, uh, sharing reward. Uh, some of it's around some of the good work practices that exist within your businesses. Some of it's around whether or not there is greater investment in skills, in health and well-being, uh, and pulling those out against some points. Now, that's quite tricky to do. It's not straightforward. But what we've identified with our partners, CBI, is some proxy points, data points, where we really think we'll get as close as we can um, to that data. And we're going to do the same thing at the level of local community impact. And then within a much more uh, contained way, we're going to try and get some basics on uh, organizations' approach to net zero uh, and, and, um, and possibly a couple of other points. Now, we're still in the process of refining exactly how we're going to ask these questions. We've got limited space, but this hopefully gives you a flavor of just how ambitious we're being in terms of what we get. Uh, and if we move on from that, so what we need from you then is... We are drawing a floor, so we want the participants in this to have been in EO for at least a year because we think that's reasonable in terms of you'll have some reported data that uh, can you can compare against you know pre uh, pre introducing EO. We're looking for a mix of ownership types, so across that 150, we want to try to create a reflection of the shape of the 
sector overall across the country. And we want to do that because what it'll allow us to do is to make some claims or extrapolate some of our findings, caveated, but extrapolate them for, we believe this is what the sector does uh, writ large. So we want a mix. Now, most of you will have seen the data that says that the EOT model is just absolutely shooting up in popularity. So there's going to be a mix of companies with EOTs in place, some 100%, some with a mixed or a hybrid model. We're also going to be looking for organizations who are fully directly share owned, uh, and, and we're going to include a portion of worker co-ops. Um, we are also drawing a line where we say we're, we're, we're not we're not going to do micro businesses. Now, uh, we just believe that that is going to support the um, efficacy, if you like, the robustness of the research, particularly when we're comparing against non-employee owned businesses and being able to see the real impact of the model. Um, as we've said before, as I've said before, that 15, 20 minutes you know, uh, survey hopefully completed by someone in your senior leadership team, uh, and we'll send you advance notice on topics and so on so that we can pull together data. Um, we are as far as possible not going to ask you to sort of add different data points. We'll just be asking you for specific pieces. Uh, and then once we get all of that, we'll start to put some of it together and draw out some really interesting insights. So that's one, that's, that's strand one, really big, meaty, exciting. Uh, right, apologies, you're having to listen to me just rabbit at you. Won't go on for too much longer, I promise. And also, I can see myself on camera, and I sort of look like I'm being interviewed under caution. Uh, I'm in the very snazzy offices of an employee-owned business where I, uh, I, I, I um, am one of their trustees. And uh, But anyway, it sort of looks like I'm under the spotlight. But moving on, second strand, uh, good EO project. So this is the qualitative stuff. This is really rich uh, uh, data. This is going to be us trying to take at least half of that 150 that we uh, were looking for through the survey and setting up interviews with you. So 75 qualitative interviews, that's a, that's a punchy number, uh, will give us really incredibly rich data here. Um, these uh, interviews are going to be carried out by Al Gleam and his fantastic colleagues at DGS Research, DGS themselves, uh, employee owned. So hopefully bringing some real uh, nuance and insight to those interviews in terms of, you know, we've got a limited amount of time with you. We're trying to protect your time. So those interviews will be uh, split to 45 minutes or an hour with uh, a, a senior a member of the senior management team, and then 15 minutes with uh, someone ideally in an employee representative role, possibly a trustee, possibly someone uh, from a, a council or something like that. That last bit, really important that we get that. Um, we really want to make sure that there is employee voice reflected in what we do for very obvious reasons. Uh, but the, that bigger amount of time is with the person in the management role, because as I said, we just want to be able to unpick and understand what are the decisions being made by operational leaders that are driving some of those EO outcomes. Um, I think that will really, if you like, unlock the golden goose um, in terms of what, what, what we're able to report on uh, once we finish this process. So, so moving on, um, so that's the shape of it and why we're doing this element. Uh, next slide, Nathan. Uh, yeah, so what we're looking for you, as I've said, um, so uh, the, we're gonna split this very slightly. So because, there, are, there is just such a significantly large proportion of businesses with EOTs in place. We are doing a deep dive into um, EOT working. There's very specific, unique governance that's required by that model, uh, as most of you will be aware of. So the interviews with the EOT businesses, we've extended a little um, to make sure we can really draw out some of the specific richness from, uh, from, from those conversations. Uh, everybody gets the same amount, though, with the employee owner representative. Um, so, yeah, terrifically excited about those. Um, right, let's move us on. Um, so, look, uh, well, and just to kind of give you the heads up, and, and, and what will happen is we're doing this in sequence. So the first part of the year, uh, we'll get the survey out. Um, 
during the survey, you're going to be asked whether or not you would be happy to also be one of the interview candidates. Um, we are, as you can tell, I'm not going to interview everybody. Uh, so we, we, again, within the interview cohort, will be trying to sustain that, that pattern of that rough you know, reflection of the sector. So we will interview some, but not all of you. Um, and uh, when we do, Al or one of his colleagues will contact you in advance, to ask you a few questions up front, we'll pick the date, you'll get some prior warnings so you can be prepared for those conversations. And uh, the, the really the, the flavor of those conversations are going to be about, as I said, us drawing out good practice, what works, what doesn't, what you're measuring, but also what's not worked. What are the lessons that you know, you've discovered since you've been in employee ownership where you've had to find a workaround? You have things haven't gone the way you wanted. Um, you know, we, we are all tremendously excited and there's a danger that we, uh, we believe in advance that we know what the answer is gonna be and we can't afford to do that. Um, and as Fran said, our research partners will keep us very honest on this. Uh, but um, yeah, we, we've got to be able to be um, gen genuinely reflective about what works and what doesn't work. So, so look, that's strand two, and then our wizards on the strand three, much quicker uh, to to all of your relief. Um, so this is a smaller strand, um, and this is this piece, like I said, about really testing the mechanics of non-financial impact management for an ownership model. So lots of you uh, will be very enlightened corporate citizens already. You'll almost certainly be doing some kind of management or recognition of, you know, what's your carbon footprints? Uh, what's your transition to net zero pathway look like? Uh, you may well be doing, um, uh, you know, you won't, may well be thinking about what your social impact is within your core operating business, particularly if you're, for instance, trying to compete for public sector contracts and so on, or get on large firm supply chains. But you, know, you may also uh, be, be, be a B Corp already. We know that there's a, a large number of uh, EO businesses which are B Corps. You may have other accreditations. So we're, we're trying to kind of gather and capture all of that and really build a new channel of data here. And we want to create a tool to help you do that. So we're going to design that and we're going to test it. We're going to road test it. So if I move us on to the next slide, um, we're going to road test this with a handful of organizations. So again, you may well be asked if you're up for that. Um, we want to try and get a rough mix of, of sort of smaller and larger organizations here. Clearly, no point in us trying to reflect the size of the sector in, in such a small cohort. But the aim is to provide you all with a tool that any organization can pick up, whether you've been doing impact already or, or, or you're fresh to it, and you can start to gather some of that impact data specific to the model that in the future, we will it will be absolute gold dust for us in terms of what we can take to policymakers and wider audiences. Uh, so there we go. I think that's um, me pretty much done. Um, uh, so yeah, so we're going to pause now, much to everybody's relief, been listening to me for far too long, uh, but look, uh, we're going to get into a and a now, uh, so please throw questions into the chat. Um, uh, Adriana Kirker and Joe Oliver, Joe, I didn't mention you earlier, so, you know, uh, I, uh, sorry about that, but uh, fantastic, brilliant colleagues from CBI Economics, Al Gleed, who I've mentioned uh, from DGS Research, uh, award-winning EO firm, Al, I believe is, is how you now prefer to be referred to. So uh, look, uh, I'm going to be quiet. Uh, I'm going to let you ask questions. So please unmute, please turn videos on, please start those questions coming thick and fast. Uh, and uh, let's, let's hear from the real experts. So I am going to just open my chat. So I can see that. Um, so November 2022. So question from Ed uh, Reisman there. Uh, so yes, and uh, time timescales fine. So so uh, I don't want to I don't want to own these questions. Um, but if they're simple ones based on kind of clarity about what we've already covered, it might make sense if I do. Uh, so look from November 2022 to for, for me, given that the primary research activity is going to be taking place. Um, earlier than 
November 2023, Ed, I am afraid I think that that line of wanting you to have been in the model for at least a year means that um, we we might not come to you. So that I'm very sorry for that. That's frustrating, disappointing. But uh, for uh, unless we get in real trouble with numbers and, and we really need to expand our search, uh, I think we're going to try to stick to that one year uh, in the model uh, baseline. Um, uh, Deb, uh, timescales for the program. So I'm going to hand over to Adriana for that one. Adriana, do you want to pick up Deb's question about timescales? Yes, thank you, Camel. Very happy to. And, and hi, everyone. Um, thanks for joining the call today. Um, so timescales, as Campbell uh, mentioned earlier, the overall timeframes for the uh, knowledge program um, are running to essentially October 2023. So uh, we're aiming to give us a bit of time to um, distribute the findings and uh, share them with uh, key stakeholders that we would like to try and um, Shout the work uh, to, so for example, treasury uh, audiences or local MPs, etc. So um, we'd like to do that ahead of the next EOA annual conference um, in November. So we are aiming to finalize the project by October, um, the sort of mid to late of October. Now, obviously, the timescales for the different uh, work streams are three programs that we've talked about um, earlier are slightly different. The first work package is um, currently um, in, in train, essentially we're working on the survey um, and that's going to be distributed quite quite uh, uh, promptly in the next few weeks, uh, which is where we would require your input um, and we'd be looking to then utilise the findings from the survey to uh, carry out some analysis around um, how employee ownership, um, what, what kind of employee, uh, benefits employee ownership brings in terms of the economic, the social and the environmental um aspects of um of the business um and that's likely to run until around april uh which will be followed by uh al's work uh, around the business interviews um so uh, that will be around sort of q2 uh to q uh, um q2 of this year um from uh, sort of around easter time through to the summer and then over the summer period we'll be working on the third work stream which would be the integrated um project uh, where we'd be developing the, the, the tool. Um, so those are kind of the, the rough time scales, but we can certainly share something a bit more detailed as well with you, just to give you a sense of the key to, uh, sort of timelines. Thanks, Adriana, that's incredibly helpful. Uh, you're, you're so much uh, more uh, effective than I am, that Lucy Gara on hearing your voice has instantly said that uh, they're in. Uh, and they're up for taking part in the research. So that's that's brilliant, Lucy, thank you. Um, so got a question here about whether we're gonna take into account what sector of the economy companies operate in. So again, Adriana, do you wanna just talk through that a little? Absolutely, so we do want to account for different sector um, uh, models and um, differences between sectors. We will be keeping this quite broad. Um, I think one of the things that we are conscious of is that that as soon as you start to get into uh, a lot of the details, then obviously you're you're dealing with a much smaller sample and the analysis just won't be as robust. So we will be aiming to keep that fairly high level, fairly broad. So we'll be talking about manufacturing, we'll be talking about retail and distribution, about services. Um, but uh, we are certainly looking to try and capture those, those broad sector differences. Thanks, Adriana. So, um, look. But by the way, if, if people have follow-ups um, to their questions, then then just please please shout um, so we can kind of keep that continuity going. If if you, if you don't think uh, you don't think we quite nailed the answer, um, so look, thank, thanks for the answer on on sector. Uh, as people know, just to add to that, yeah, kind of the White Rose data tends to tell us that sort of roughly 40% of the sector is in a professional services model, and everybody else is, is, is in a sort of slightly different model, typically tends to have a kind of smaller center and a broader base of employees. Uh, that's a real sort of dividing line, I think, for me in terms of the models, and we'll sort of show some of that out uh, as well. Um, question uh, about whether we're worried that data will be skewed by kind of people's years within pandemic. Uh, Adriana, one for you to pick up there, please. 
Yes, sure. So we are absolutely going to be taking into account the, the impact of the pandemic. And the idea is that in our modeling and in our in the data that we collect from you, we'll be looking further back to pre-pandemic years to 2019. It's potentially asking you to kind of to try and uh, um, remember what your performance was previously. Um, but uh, we'll keep that at, at a very high level um, in, in some senses. So we will be looking pre-pandemic, we'll be looking at what happens during the pandemic as well. So there will be a time element to, to uh, our analysis, but it very much depends on the information that you are able to provide. So that will be captured through the survey. Um, I'm also, I'm happy to pick up, so the, the next question as well, uh, um, Campbell, yeah, no, th thanks, Natasha. Just, I'm just going to swing behind you really quickly on that. The other bit for me to note on the pandemic question is that in the contrast between EO and non-employee owned businesses, of course, everybody's been through the same experience. So any fluctuations that we see, you know, should be experienced broadly, you know, in the same way. Uh, so, so that comparability isn't, isn't compromised. Um, so, yeah, but go ahead, please, Adriana, jump on to the next one. I think also to note that um, we will be seeking to compare performance as well against non-employee owned businesses. So essentially the, the broader business community across different sectors. And one of the key things that we're looking to, to um, assess is uh, resilience. And I think the pandemic period obviously does give us potentially um, uh, an opportunity to test that, that resilience point. So looking at performance um, uh, over the, the, the course of the pandemic compared to the broader sort of business population. So just bear that in mind as well. Um, so in terms of uh, cycles uh, in commercial performance, uh, how will we identify whether an EO business is overall more successful than non-employee owned businesses? So there will be various things that we will be trying to control for. And we, we will be looking to try and capture consistent information in the way that we frame our survey questions. So we will be probably quite prescriptive in, in, some, in, in some situations about the information that we need from you. So we will refer to a certain, certain uh, period of time. Um, so that's, that's how it kind of how just, we'll try to ensure that consistency across all of our responses. Obviously, you have to bear in mind that we, you know, uh, we are comparing against the broader business population. So that does mean that our survey questions might be, you know, they, they will not always look like they capture sort of the individual uh, challenges or characteristics of your business. Um, but that's purely because we are trying to, to ensure that that kind of one for one comparison and that consistency in the way that we frame the question. So um, that will be also the case in terms of uh, what we capture in, in the um, uh, time period that we we're asking the data for. Thanks, Adriana. Simon, good to see you, Simon. Great question. Did that answer your question? You're happy? No, no, it didn't answer your question. Are, are you able to uh, come on in detail? Yeah, hi, Adriana. The, the point hi. I was trying to the point I was trying to make is that every business is going to see a cycle up and a cycle down. Um, mm. Some of it will be impacted by uh, the financial uh, headwinds that companies are facing together. Some of it might be sectorally based. Um, and, and so I, I, I'm just interested in how you're going to be able to um, smooth those differences out, because what you described is one mechanism, but it's not going to smooth out the ups and downs that um, a commercial business might be feeling in its sector or mm -hmm. might be feeling because of its own particular uh, circumstances that it's facing. I think the most important thing from an employee-owned business is the atmosphere in which employees, partners, um, owners um, face into challenges. It's not so much whether there are or aren't challenges, it's how do you do it, not the what, the how. Sure. So we would be looking over a, an annual period, so hopefully seasonal kind of experiences will be smoothed out um, as, as a result of that, but it would be helpful to get a sense from you as to whether that's still unlikely to. Obviously, there will be sort of a more macro level um, conditions, which will mean that there will be fluctuations on an annual basis as well. Obviously, you know, we're expecting to, to go into a recession, for example, we, well, we are going into a recession. So there will be some of those macro level influences that we will be looking to try and control across all of the, all of the results. Um, but if there are any sector specific or business specific um, uh, 
influences that you would like us to, you, you, to to be aware of and try to control for that would be actually helpful to, to get that information from you it, i mean it might be helpful just to have a maybe a free hand box for businesses to be able to identify anything that you might want to take into account mm -hmm. that, that might just help add a little bit of extra granularity to the data that you collect you can choose to use it or not but at least it's sure. there yeah thanks thank you thanks simon that's the Adriana, you were enormously polite and gentle with Simon there, where he asked you to include an extra question. I spent two months demanding as many extra questions as I can get in the survey, uh, and uh, Adriana is distinctly unimpressed with me, I think, at this point. Um, uh, so look, just um, just moving on uh, with a couple of questions. So there's a couple of questions around the integrated tool, which I might pick up. Um, uh, so uh, first was, was sort of how do we intend to kind of share? So look. Uh, not trying to we're not trying to kind of overcomplicate here because this is an area which can get super complicated right so what what i have in mind at the moment is essentially some super simple guidance and probably an excel based uh tool some a, a simple sort of spreadsheet that you know gives you some pointers about what are the specific kind of data points or inputs that you could gather and then what kind of um what kind of uh impacts that that could then show us in a relatively straightforward way um, so that's sort of what I imagine it'll be. And once we've tested it and tested it with businesses and some different sectors and sciences, uh, then we kind of share that. Um, and, and I think just share it broadly. So not, not just with this group, not, not you know, but actually kind of make it publicly available, certainly via the OAW site. We're an independent charitable think tank. So, you know, our mission dictates that we share everything kind of free. Uh, with whoever wants it, but we'll definitely push it out to the sector. And I imagine with EOA, we'd we'll probably look to do some work, you know, kind of with businesses who are interested in picking it up and using it. The other question on this was sort of the overlap with existing tools. So look, we're absolutely not trying to kind of um, uh, to gazump other tools. Uh, what what I believe we will be able to design is something that will be a complement. Uh, to the way that other tools work. So whether you've been using the B impact assessment as a part of the B Corp process, whether you're using something like the good business charter or a local business charter, um, the starting point is really around, you know, kind of what are your impacts on some specific stakeholder groups. And so, uh, yeah, so we will have an absolutely kind of laser eye to making sure that this is something that complements data that you might already be gathering and that you can simply just reuse in this. And what this will give you is a sort of EO specific lens, if you like. Um, if you were producing an annual report, you might have your broad impact report and you might have a subsection that says, this is what we believe we can attribute to our ownership model. Um, so that's where I'm going on that. But uh, look, I, I, we published a, a paper in our early thinking about this so OAW uh, last year, just before conference, and we might send that out to everybody. Uh, it's not going to be everybody, so it's not, you know, it, it's 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 not a Dan Brown novel. Uh, I can tell you that, but uh, it, uh, and, I, and I can say that because because I'm afraid I wrote it. But um, yeah, we'll send it out, and people can get a bit of a flavour of our, our thinking on it. Um, uh, a question here about which is a good question about kind of definition of employee and business for the purposes of this research. So really key. Um, so look, the, the definition we're using is the UA's definition, which is that uh, we're looking uh, for a business to be sharing 25% or more uh, of its ownership, uh, which is made available to all employees um, and, and comes with uh, some mechanisms for voice and participation. So that's the that's the definition we're looking for. So Susie, uh, you know, by that definition, it looks like you you might not be a part of this, which is a real shame. Um, I'm trying to keep a kind of tally, by the way, of, of um, comments in the chat from businesses who've said, uh, yes, we're in versus those who said, no, actually, your parameters mean we're out. And I think we're three for three at this point. So I, I think we're, we're sort of netting out at, 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 at zero gains. So come on, uh, let's 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 see if we can persuade more people uh, to, to be part of this. So there's a very practical question about sending out the survey, Adriana, uh, and whether there's a formal opt in. I wonder if you could just pick that one up for us. So there wouldn't be a formal opt-in necessarily. We will share our survey with everybody who's on this group, um, but there would be an opt-out. So obviously, if you if you would prefer not to be contacted, then then do let us know. But we do hope to try and engage everybody here. 
um, in our work. And it's the same um, for the interviews that we're doing and for the uh, testing that we're doing on the third work stream. Um, there was one other question as well, I think, in terms of, so from Paul um, around uh, whether the data that we produce will help um, EO business develop best practice examples uh, rather than just an economic outcome. And that's the, the point that we are trying to address through the second work stream, which Al will be working on. Um, Al, I don't know whether you want to come in with um, a few words on that. Yeah, so in work stream two, hi everyone, by the way, um, I guess we're looking at what works in its broadest sense. So <clears throat> these will be long in-depth discussions, you know, 45 minutes, an hour where we'll we tend to structure them a bit like a funnel in a way that we start off quite broad and we'll say, you know, okay, since you became employee owned, what's worked, what have been the three most impactful things? And then we can drill into why, the, what you know, what the impacts have been, why it was impactful, how you went about it, whether any pitfalls and get quite a lot of detail around that. And we won't just be looking at, I mean, we will probably look at things like productivity and financial performance, what's impacted that, but we'll also go, you know, just be looking at what works in a gen, what's worked in a general sense. And also as the conversation goes on, we can prompt them in on specifics, what's worked in terms of, you know, has anything had an impact in terms of social benefits, um, employee well-being, recruitment and retention, a whole raft of things and get get detail on those. So ultimately what we're hoping to is to have a lot of detailed, rich insight into what works, you know, or, and has an impact. Um, and then when we report that back, we'll try and report it. Cause I guess the questions businesses will be asking is what works for a company like mine. So we'll try and report it back in a way that you can go, okay, uh, I've got this EO model, I'm in this sector, what works for a company like mine? And, you know, we'll have a summary of these are the most impactful things and then you can drill into a lot of detail. So if it's about employee voice or recruitment and retention, you can then, if you're interested in that area, navigate into some in-depth insight about what works, why, what the pit, potential pitfalls are, how to address those, etc. So hopefully it'll all be really useful stuff for EO businesses. Thanks, Al. That's, that's incredibly helpful. I, look, I'm, I'm just going to add very briefly to that to say for EOA and for OEW, um, we've got a really clear ambition here, which is that right now, uh, management teams and employee-owned businesses cannot routinely access best practice from across the sector. So as I said, there's some great case studies, great rich, you know, kind of exemplars when you go looking for it. But actually what Al's just described, that ability to sort of refine that search by what sector you're in, what type of ownership you have and so on, and really dig into kind of some examples of what's working for, um, for high performing businesses, that's missing. Uh, so part of the task in this project is to design that survey. What does that survey look like? But with a view that we would keep doing that that we would run that year on year on year. And as I said earlier, we will compound the value of that insight uh, and make sure that anyone coming into the sector, anyone who's been in the sector can routinely go and find best practice that's that's valuable and applicable. So um, just in incredibly, incredibly valuable. Um, just responding to, uh, to a few other comments. Um, uh, so, so look, I, I think we're up. I think we're ahead. I think we released a couple of heads. So, Michael, thank you. Gay, formative content, brilliant. Thank you. Glad you guys uh, are in. A um, uh, couple of um, reflections. Some people, you know, so some of you are maybe in a position uh, where you are in contact with multiple businesses, EO businesses. So, Ian, uh, Ian Hiscock, brilliant. Thank you, Ian. You and I chatted, and you know, you're going to try and bring some extra uh, businesses into the fold. Fantastic. Um, anyone else who's in an advisor role or uh, maybe uh, got a got a, uh, yeah, a, a position, uh, Karen Mosley, lovely to see you, Karen. Uh, you know, uh, if you've still got your chambers role, if, yeah, anyone who's got a, a chance to kind of bring extra EO businesses into the mix, uh, please do that. We, we, we really need to make sure we nail our numbers here. Uh, we've uh, spent the last couple of months, uh, Nathan and myself and, uh, and James from EOA, promising Adriana and, and CBI colleagues that uh, we're going to deliver 
this 150 businesses, absolutely no problem. Um, so we, we're going to have egg on our faces if we don't do that. So uh, please, everybody, help us uh, help us make make sure that happens. Um, Karen, thank you for that comment. Um, uh, Emma, intended survey uptake. Uh, Adriana, is that one you could pick up for me, please? Yes, yes, of course. So um, overall, we are aiming to get 150 EO businesses, but in terms of who we are targeting within those businesses, um, so obviously we're looking to try and get somebody who's got a good strategic understanding of the business, but also who understands the, 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 the business's finances, for example, as well. Um, so we will be targeting uh, C-suit individuals within the business. So it could be a finance director, it could be a CEO or a, a managing director. Um, now, one of the things that I would like to flag actually, and this, is a, this question, is a great opportunity to do that is that um, there will be different sections to the to the survey um, so if you remember back uh, to uh, Campbell's slide with the different sort of uh, boxes with all the uh, the themes uh, for the survey um, it is quite likely that there will be different individuals who will be able uh, who will need to be brought in to help answer some of those uh, different questions so we don't actually expect a single individual to have all of the information that we will need to hand. And so just kind of a, a bit of a heads up that you might need to get drawn a bit of help from some of the uh, colleagues within your organizations in order to answer the survey. That's excellent. Uh, thanks, Adriana. Um, uh, James, thank you, you're in. Karen, incredibly helpful, um, absolutely brilliant, thank you. Uh, Gay, also, thank you for that offer. Just really, really useful. Much appreciated. Um, Sarah, to help us help you, it's a bit Jerry Maguire, or maybe I'm showing my age there, sorry. Uh, do you have some attractive background info we can use to contact clients? Uh, yes, I'm absolutely sure that we do. Um, Sarah, why don't you follow up with Nathan or myself directly, and we'll make sure uh, that you've got that. And if anyone else needs something um, to pass on, to help kind of uh, recruit others, just uh, just let us know, uh, and we'll make sure that happens. Um, okay, brilliant. Yes, Karen. So, okay, look, clearly this is something we should do. I tell you what, look, um, Sarah. Rather than chase us, look, we'll do that anyway. We'll take that on, uh, and we'll share something. Uh, okay, there's a blog there. Yet, yeah, no, Fran. Terrific. That's super useful. Um, if there's a kind of very very short brief. Uh, kind of uh, version of, of something, maybe it's a couple of slides, maybe it's a, uh, a short formatted kind of one pager or something. I think that 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 would be something that's super simple to pass on to somebody else and, and uh, makes us look as professional as, as hopefully we're trying to trying to be here. Um, I think that'd be useful. So Nathan, I think you and I take that as an action. Um, brilliant. Uh, okay, so any more questions? Uh, I've been doing my best to monitor the chat. Um, I don't. I think we're we're across everything that's been asked. Um, if no, if there aren't any more questions coming through the chat, we've got about ten minutes left. I'm not going to keep us on unnecessarily. I am just going to add a couple of things, though, um, which I think it's worth people knowing, uh, and which which I didn't mention earlier. So um, we have. Uh, built a couple of additional elements into the way we're delivering this program to help us really ensure that um, it's well run and it delivers a high quality output. So the first of those is an academic panel. Um, so we have six colleagues who come from uh, different academic institutions, uh, and all of them have got some fantastic track record. Five of them, uh, or four of them are particular experts in employee ownership and have done research in this space before. Um, one is one of the foremost academics looking at uh, SME performance in the UK, uh, and the majority of the sector are small and medium-sized businesses, so that's kind of particularly key for us. And one of them is a particular expert around uh, social and environmental impact management, capture, and so on. So we built this academic panel to give us something to test our tools with, test our findings with, test our approach with. So hopefully just an extra layer of insurance to keep us honest, 
and ensure the quality of what we do. Um, the, uh, the, the second element there is, um, is that we have uh, some really formalized program management, as you would expect around this. So we have a program oversight board. Uh, that board uh, includes, uh, as you would expect, James from EOA uh, and, and myself, um, a number of our colleagues from both of those organizations in attendance, um, representatives from our research partners in attendance, uh, but a, a number of others. We've got some colleagues from the US. Uh, the US has a much, much richer uh, and more mature evidence base than we have. So really making sure we learn from their experience and we um, we build that in some of the, their insights into how we approach this. Uh, uh, we've got um, you know, kind of representatives from our, our biggest sponsors around the table because they bring a, an element of expertise, uh, some uh, some of the organizations who've been involved in the, the census data gathering and so on that, that you know, you'll, you'll see that's published yearly. So one of our academic panelists from White Rose Center, Andrew Robinson, one of our sponsors is RM2 um, and colleagues from RM2 who fed into that census data every year. Uh, so those guys really helping keep us honest. Uh, I think I might have seen uh, Neil Wright uh, from Tenscare on this call earlier. Neil uh, also uh, is the chair for Employee Ownership of Federation of Small Businesses. So Neil's a part of that group. Um, we've got uh, Stephen Stern, who's uh, yes, an external point of view, uh, renowned business commentator, written for the FT, The Guardian, BBC, uh, bringing some really good external challenge. Um, so really uh, kind of strong, powerful, rich uh, group who hold myself and Nathan and others to account on how we're delivering programs. So again, just uh, you know, hopefully that provides additional reassurance here. Right, so enough from me. Some people are already going. So guys, if you need to step away, please step away. Uh, Fran, uh, please come in um, and, uh, uh, and, and give us some final words. Uh, so, so, so for my part, just, just briefly to say that thank you to everybody again. Thank you to uh, research, you know, research colleagues, Adriana, Joe, uh, Al, just you know, excellent answers. Um, and um, yeah, just, just thank you for the uh, really, you know, the usual levels of enthusiasm and, and engagement from, from all of you, uh, you know, which is absolutely brilliant. So just for my part, thank you ever so much. And Fran, why, why don't you finish this off? Brilliant. Yes, thanks very much, Campbell. Just a really quick one from me, because I'm sure you're all keen to get going. Uh, thank you again. Al, Adriana, Campbell, also in the background. Nathan for being a glamorous assistant, getting us through the slides. And uh, Sam, our policy and partnerships officer, and um, Laura, our events admin, for getting us going. Um, I also, Nathan, if you could just flash up that slide again. Um, I wanted to give another shout out for anyone who missed it um, to the evaluation form um so sam is going to drop the link in the chat for the evaluation form to uh for this not uh for this webinar pardon me um also uh nathan if we could just go back to the sponsor slide again because i think that uh we do need to give them a shout out um once again uh for those who join the webinar a little bit late I wanted you to be aware that this research is made possible by all of these amazing organizations that you know giving us a big commitment to furthering the EO sector uh, and um, helping us advocate on behalf of the sector. So thank you very much. And thanks to all of you for coming today, whether you found out that you um, maybe aren't quite suitable for this particular piece of work or whether you have told us that you are fully committed. We'll share the slides, uh, we'll share the recording with you all. And we'll also pop you a link in uh, the email that follows up from this to uh, the evaluation form that I mentioned, which will be really helpful. Right, so thanks everyone. That's it from me. I think we can let you go. Have a great day. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Take care.